I mean, we have a moral obligation to share this. And we have to grant the same um, option to everybody who has an autoimmune disease that we were given. Just let them know about low-dose naltrexone. Um, but, you know, I'm not going to talk about my book, although I am really, really proud of it. I think it's, you know, educational, enlightening, funny in places. Um, I, I am not afraid to shamelessly plug it. Noel has a box of them there if anybody, if any of you want to buy one. <laughs> I've no, I have absolutely no issue plugging the book. If you're a pharmacist, stock your shelves with it. Um, but I'm not going to focus on the book today because it, the movement has moved on so much. The book wasn't enough. It has reached thousands of people, but we need this story to reach millions. So that's why I started my radio show. I was being interviewed by this magazine in uh, New Jersey, and they said to me, you know, you are really passionate about this. I don't think this, this article is going to do you justice, Mary. Why don't you start your own radio show? And I'm like, how do you do that? And they explain. I said, okay. And Noel came home from work. He said, what did you do today, dear? I started my own radio show. <laughs> it's like, who does that? Um, but it is really... Uh, taken off, and I've learned so much. I mean, I have, my one rule with the radio show is truth, right? There are ups and downs with LDN, and we, let's share them, because even with the ups and downs, it is the greatest medical discovery since penicillin. So, I have these guests coming on, and uh, they tell about how they get their lives back from MS, or Crohn's, and sarcoidosis. I mean, there's people with full-blown AIDS living a perfectly normal life on low-dose naltrexone, HIV, um, really heart-wrenching stories, you know, people sharing um, beautiful, beautiful stories of truth and hope, and you know, you can really feel the honesty in, in all of them. And then, and I get doctors on, and uh, Dr. Burke Berkson was on, and Dr. Skip was on, and my brother, Dr. Phil Boyle was on, and you know, the interviews are actually downloaded hundreds of times weekly, but Dr. McCandless came on last week, and she was telling me um, all about her fabulous work with uh, LDN and kids with autism. And then she was talking about her trial in Malai. And uh, she added, kind of, you know, without really focusing on it, she said, yes, me and my husband actually take low-dose naltrexone to prevent illness. Um, we believe it's a wonderful um, drug to slow down the aging process. And we really, really love the fact that it um, increases and improves sexual desire and drive. Right? Now, at the time, I didn't even take any notes. I got 50 emails after that show. You know, can, can LDN help in the bed? I mean, people, you know, I, we've had people say that they got their lives back from AIDS, Crohn's, and all you care about is like this one little... But, you know, that was... It was just so funny that the wide range of diseases um, that low-dose naltrexone addresses. But not only that, it, it, it makes healthy people even healthier. You know, what we found here is absolutely mind-blowing. But I'd like to set the, um, the history of LDN straight. I'd like to tell you guys all about um, Dr. Bernard Bahari. Bernard Bahari, in a nutshell, in my humble opinion, truly deserves a Nobel Prize for discovering the therapeutic effects of low-dose naltrexone. Now, Dr. Bahari is a Harvard graduate and board certified with the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology since 1970. Dr. Bahari's early work consisted of helping those afflicted with drug and alcohol abuse in New York City. And from there in the 80s, his work expanded to the HIV and AIDS community. He was very familiar with the clinical application of the drug naltrexone because it was FDA approved to treat drug addiction. He experimented a great deal with the drug and observed that his patients with HIV who were on a low dose of naltrexone never developed full-blown AIDS. Now this was before HIV and AIDS even had a name. Now in 1984, a research paper by Dr. Ian Zagon and Dr. Patricia McLaughlin was published in Science. It proved that naltrexone in a low dose in mice reduced cancer growth and in a high dose increased cancer growth. They proved that naltrexone had the ability to enhance the body's own machinery to stimulate or repress cancer in mice 
and they deserve a heck of a lot of credit for that. See, my thinking is that that research paper could have got lost if it was not for Dr. Bernard Bahari. Nobody could have interpreted and implemented the findings like Dr. Bahari did. He took these studies in mice further than anybody iman imagined possible. He translated his own experience and the published paper into clinically treating people and successfully stopping HIV, AIDS, Crohn's, MS, a whole spectrum of diseases based on a disturbed immune system. And that's why I think he deserves the highest recognition in the field of medicine. And his work led to the first human trial for LDN and HIV in 1985. And although that was a successful trial, he couldn't get through the bureaucracy and greed that sadly forms the very fabric of our healthcare system because naltrexone is a cheap drug. So we've been through it. A pharmaceutical company is not going to invest in naltrexone. We all know it. Um, it's a cheap generic drug. They're not going to invest millions because why invest millions when anyone can produce for pennies the drug that you prove is this golden. But I think that our way, that we do have a way forward. I think that our best way forward is to mimic what aspirin did. And I'll educate you what I read on aspirin in a minute, and I'm really sorry I didn't bring one for all of you, but I won't take long. But I think the way aspirin actually got out there is the way LDN should get out there. But back to um, Dr. Bahari first. Um, the first person to take low-dose naltrexone for MS was his daughter's best friend. Um, her name is Chris Lombardi. And in 1988, she was diagnosed with MS. There were no treatments for um, MS back then. Nothing was approved. And he decided to put her on low-dose naltrexone based on the principle that, number one, it will do no harm. See, if we could just remember that, first do no harm. It's just so beautiful. And he also knew that MS was a disease based on a disturbed immune system, and he had seen what LDN could do for his um, HIV and AIDS patients. So given the low risk and the potential benefit, he scripted low-dose naltrexone for her. And it worked so well. I believe it worked better than even he imagined it would. And we didn't have the internet then, so all of this had to spread by word of mouth. And it did, because people need hope. The medical community, I mean, my brother is a doctor. I love doctors. It's just, it's the system. It is so difficult um, for something like this to get through. But we will get through. Like I said, I will explain about aspirin in a minute. But Dr. Bahari figured he wasn't guessing is another thing. He wasn't thinking, you know, maybe this is safe or maybe it isn't. He absolutely knew it was safe. But I do believe that w the results he got even astounded him. And as more people came to his office, the more courageous he got to push back the barriers even more and treat a whole spectrum of autoimmune diseases. And then to actually tie them all together with a common denominator and say that, you know, everybody with an autoimmune disorder actually has low endorphins. And naltrexone taken nightly triples endorphin production, and that stops the immune system from attacking itself. So he, the theory itself is so simple. And when you say it to people in suits in their offices and with their degrees, they do look at you like you're crazy. 